What's up guys? I'm going to show you how you can turn your Android device into a full gaming console. So if you bought that Nexus 7 or if you bought that new Samsung Galaxy S3, you must watch this video. Anyhow, let's get started. So what is an emulator? An emulator is basically a virtual game system. It emulates a console like a Nintendo 64, NES, or a PlayStation. And here you could see some of the emulators that I own. Gearoid is the original Sega Master System. Gensoid is the Sega Genesis. NESoid is the original Nintendo. SNESoid is the Super Nintendo. N64oid is the Nintendo 64. And FPSC is the PlayStation. And in order to play video games, you need ROMs. ROMs are, that's it. Their ROMs are basically games. And some of these you cannot find at the Play Store. You will have to Google search for these in order to find them. And I can assure you that if you Google any of these, you should be able to find the APK to install it on your Android device. With the exception of FPSC, you are able to purchase FPSC. And I believe it's like three or four dollars, probably the most inexpensive console you can buy, um, which we'll talk about that a little later. Now, in order to play games, you need to download ROMs. And some of these you have to either look for them online, or in this case, I have a pretty cool app called Droid EMU. And you can download ROMs for some of these gaming uh, emulators here. Super Nintendo, Nintendo, Genesis, Game Boy, Game Gear, Amiga, Atari, Sega Master System, and so on. So for example, if I wanted to download a Nintendo game, all I have to do is click on Nintendo, find the game that I'm looking for, and there's pretty much just about every Nintendo game that ever existed, click on it, it will download into my SD card into an appropriate folder. For those of you that want the URL, there it is, droidemu.org. They also sell an emulator, I don't think it's like $7, which is the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and I think Genesis, and Sega Master System, I think it emulates all those for 7 bucks. Anyhow, um, it downloads them into an SD card, which I'll show you right now. Let me go here, I'll use Root Explorer. And you want to have something similar to this. So for example, let me go into the SD card and I have a folder called ROMs and you want to do the same thing you want to make sure that you have a folder called ROMs and as you can see here I have Genesis N64 NES PSX for PlayStation SMS I don't know what I have there or Sega Master System and Super Nintendo so if you I click on my NES folder you will see all of these are my ROMs okay and they're in zip files so Jurassic Park, Carnove, Kung Fu, you know, these are all, all the Mega Mans. These are all my ROMs that I've downloaded. And you, I don't know if you saw that. Oops, let me go back. It also saves, um, like Mike Tyson punch on. These are like saved games that I've done. So now that you have the basic of what an emulator is and a ROM is, assuming that you've already downloaded an emulator, let's start or let's begin with Gearoid, which is the Sega Genesis. And as you can see here, I've already appointed the directory SD card ROMs Sega Master System. I'm telling this emulator that these are where my ROMs are located. So let's play Rocky. When you load a game, you'll notice that it shows up with a virtual keyboard. Now, assuming you don't have, let me turn this down. Assuming that you don't have a Bluetooth keyboard and you're kind of on the go, then what you can do is use this gaming pad here, which is kind of nice. It sometimes gets in the way, but in a game like this, it should be okay. So let's go ahead and hit start and turn that up a little bit. And it also has a haptic feedback. Just go ahead and play. Now, one of the things that you can do is there's a lot of settings that I'm not going to go ahead. I'm not going to go through every single one of them. Uh, but for example, audio video settings, you can disable sound, change the volume, change the scaling mode. There's a lot of stuff that you can do and including, for example, virtual keypad. If I had a controller, what I can do is disable that and you'll see that that virtual keypad will be gone. Okay, but now I won't be able to pay, play because I need my controller. Let me go ahead and enable that. I can also save my game from here, save the state. Um, Let's go back to input settings, virtual keypad, and let's see. 
see it's see him play here. So some of these emulators like this one here, I won't be able to close it. Why? Because I'm running Jelly Bean and even with Ice Cream Sandwich I wasn't able to do it. Mainly because some of these emulators are old so the back button doesn't really work. So in order to close them what you need to do is click on the home button. And then what I do is just uh, disable all that and close all this stuff here. And that's how you're able to close them. So you can see that it's very easy but let's talk about how you can integrate it with a remote control or a Bluetooth. Let's go ahead and do the, uh, the Wiimote. So I have my Wii remote here and in order to use a remote like the Wii, what you need to do is download an application called Wiimote. And what Wiimote allows you to do is sync your Wii remote control with the Bluetooth on your Android device. And it's really simple. All you need to do is click on init and connect. And when you click on that, it's going to ask you to pair. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I don't think I've paired it with this device. It's searching. Hold down this red button here to pair. Found one. Re okay. Oops, I unclicked it. Anyhow, once you've um, connected the uh, or synced them together, all you need to do is hit select. Click on the Wii Control IME and you're done. Now, I don't use the uh, Wii Remote just because I actually used to use this, but I feel like it's a little too small for my hands. So what I like to use is I've actually purchased this, what's called PhoneJoy. I prefer PhoneJoy instead. It actually looks like a PlayStation controller. Now, I know you guys are going to be saying, well, why don't you just use a PlayStation controller? With a PlayStation controller, first of all, I don't own a PlayStation, I know, right? And <clears throat> second is, you need to be rooted. Now, it's, in my case, it doesn't matter, I am rooted, but I want to make sure that for you out there that are not rooted, um, there are alternatives. And Phone Joy, I like it because it's very lightweight. You have a USB charger here that charges the phone, and I'm telling you right now, it feels really good in the hands. Um, it's very, very light. Anyhow, so, this PhoneJoy uh, controller has its own Bluetooth app called Blue IME. Okay, now it's really simple. Once you've paired the Bluetooth together, all you need to do is select. Okay, I've already done that. Select the driver. I'm going to select the IME to Blue IME, and that's it. It's connected. Oops. Hold on. Let me turn this on. Should have a solid green light right now. There it goes. Okay, so now it's connected. Um, pretty much it. Now all I, all I have to do is load up, let's say, let's go ahead and load up Nintendo and play a game. Let's do Castlevania. Should be able to play. This is kind of difficult. Go ahead and hit the start button. Okay. I, like I said, like Phone Joy better. Okay. I'm gonna have to lay this down here. Actually, let's try and do this. I don't know if that's going to work. It's probably going to fall. Okay. So this is awesome. This is the original Castlevania. And you can see I'm just playing it here. It's really fast. Um, like the Sega Master System, you have different settings here. And you can even change, for example, you can swap B and A, A and B. You can have this way. Usually when I play Contra, I have like my own Contra setup where this is to jump and this is to fire. It just makes it a lot easier than doing this. So all, all of these uh, settings are in here. I'm not going to go through every single one of them. But now, now that we have all this done, there's something missing. I mean, this, yeah, it's great to play here um, on your phone, but you know, it's really a better experience when you play on your TV. So let's go on over to the living room and I'm going to show you guys how to even make this the ultimate gaming experience. Let's go on over here now. So moving down to the uh, living room here, you will see that I have a little setup here going on. And this is an AMHL adapter. You can buy one of these from Amazon. I'll post a link below. I think I paid like $14. I think it was actually on sale. I bought pay $10 for it, but anyhow, you'll need one of these and this is so that you can hook it up to your television. Now, this needs a power source. So, all you need to do is connect your 
uh, regular power that you use to charge your phone. So go ahead and power that. And this also has an HDMI uh, connector. So go ahead and connect that. Just like that. And this, what seems to be like a power source, connects right to your phone. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and power that on. Unlock it. Okay. Oh, stupid thing. It's like backwards now. There we go. Okay. Once we've done that, oops. Sorry, guys. There we go. That's better. Make sure it goes into landscape. It actually works better this way. Okay, there we go. Um, you should be able to see that on your TV. Go ahead and move back here. There you go. Okay. Now, if you have problems with your television, I'm going to show you really quick what you should do. And ex For example, if it's not lining up, I know it lines up on this one because I've already fixed it. Go ahead and click on menu on your television. Now, I'm using a Samsung television and here I believe it's picture options. See where it says, uh, sorry, right there. See where it says size? Make sure that, uh, sorry for the reflection there. Uh, make sure it's, it's, it states just scan. Otherwise, I believe the uh, default settings are like 16 by nine. So just go ahead and click just scan. I'm gonna go ahead and exit here. And let's go down here and play a game. Let me just reset everything up and I'll be back. So I went ahead and changed my setup here. I have my phone down here just so you guys can see it and I'm running an HDMI on the side um, normally I don't play it like this so I'm gonna go ahead and play Super Nintendo so that you guys can see that and let's go ahead and learn uh, load uh, Mega Man X one of my all-time favorites I'm gonna go ahead and move to the side here just so you guys can see the uh, controller I'm gonna try to line that up and this is really where you can see the Android emulator shine um, when you hook it up to a television, the experience just is so much better and a lot of people just are blown away. Um, I've reconfigured my buttons here so you can see this is my jump and this is my fire button. Um, anyhow, so yeah, I mean growing up in the 80s, gaming was a huge part of my life. I played a ton of video games and it was just, uh, uh, you know, playing, being able to play these games is, is amazing. Um, I love it and the fact that you can just play on the go is even better as you guys saw with the And you can do it even with this one. This, you can do it with any emulator. You can just play through your phone Granted, it's a lot easier and or a lot better to play this way. Sorry um, Anyhow, you can see how smooth the graphics are and just how Easily or how the gameplay is it's, it's phenomenal no lag I mean, it's really great. You can also hook up to controllers on, on let's say you were playing Street Fighter. Let's go ahead and play, uh, load up PlayStation. Now with PlayStation, it gets a little bit more interesting just because, let's go ahead and do Resident Evil. With PlayStation, it gets a little bit more interesting because it requires a lot more steps. You just can't really just download ROMs and play them. You have to, there's a small process. I can actually do a whole video just explaining how that works. I went ahead and I know you probably can't see, but I've enabled the FPS up here on the, on the, I don't know if you guys can see me, but I've enabled FPS right now. It's running at 51 frames per second. Okay. It's running about yeah 50 FPS. Let me go ahead and skip that. And there's a lot of tweaks that you can do with the graphics. So for example, let me just show you really quick. Let me go to settings, video, and you know, these are, for example, let me get rid of frame skip. Uh, frame limiter, I mean, I'm not gonna go through every single one of this. This, this application has a really great tutorial on how all this works. Um, in a nutshell, frame limiter, if I turn that off, it lets the game just run at full blast. It doesn't limit, um, which is really, really fast. Uh, print FPS just prints the frames per second up there. So I was, I was actually going to try and scroll right now. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, Anti-aliasing. Let's go ahead and turn that on. And I think I need to reboot when I turn anti-aliasing on. But So anyway, anyhow, as you tweak... Let's go ahead and do a new game. As you tweak all these settings, you can see that your FPS starts to get lower and lower. Depending on the type of phone that you have, it will either run really, really fast or really, really slow. Um, this is where a powerful phone like the Nexus or Galaxy S3 um, would really be a, 
where you can see the shine. So, go ahead and skip all this. Just so you guys can see. 51 FPS. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's a pretty solid uh, 51 FPS. 50. So it, I've seen it even as high as 70, sometimes even 80, depending on the type of game it is. And right now I think I have some of the, uh, the settings turned down a bit. But every game is a little different, so depending on what game you're playing, you're going to have to tweak it. So let me just get out of the way here. Okay. Whoops. Whoa, 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 I forgot how to play. Okay, what's to run here? I don't normally play this game. Whoa. So I went ahead and went into the gun shop here. Let's go ahead and watch this animation. Doing 51 FPS. Freeze! Who are you? What are you doing here? Hold your fire! I'm a human! <laughs> Anyhow, so as you guys can see, this is really Sorry awesome. Let me go ahead and I close this. And go ahead and quit. So gaming on the Android is a real a lot of fun. And it doesn't take a lot to get everything set up. As I stated with before with the FPSE, PlayStation stuff, it does require a little bit more tweaking, but once you get it down, it's really simple. Um, you just download the ROM, do a couple minor tweaks, upload it onto your SD card, and you're done. Once you have that, it's really, really easy. Like I said, if you guys want me to, I will do a how-to uh, PlayStation emulator setup video for you. Um, anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Really, PlayStation, Nintendo, Sega, all of these run perfectly fine on the um, Nexus and of course anything that is a lot more powerful new videos every Tuesday please subscribe and I will see you in my next video thank you